The following is a podcast from a qualified senior care provider heard on the Answers for Elders radio show. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders podcast radio network. And we are here with Rebecca Bowman, the CEO of SASH. And we have been talking this last hour all about um, the rights of seniors as they um, begin to sell, sell their home. And this is a very emotional, just overwhelming process. And Rebecca, mm -hmm. before we get into our last two, can you summarize where we've been um, on all the, the, the quote unquote bill of rights? Yes. <laughs> and so we're talking about eight things that every senior homeowner deserves in the sale of their home, regardless yes. of who they are, the home they're selling, the price point, they all deserve this. So we started with kindness mm -hmm. and then patience. Then we moved into uh, decision-making, let them have decision-making, give them the respect of knowledge and information was our fourth one. Mm -hmm. So they know the why behind all the things that they're deciding about. Then we have home mementos, allow there to be that home memento yeah. that goes with them to their new place or many of them in the case of model cars. Yes. Um, and then we talked about caring advocates. No senior should ever go through their home sale without at least one strong caring advocate who's walking through the journey with them and helping them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so now we are on number seven, believe it or not. Yeah. And, and so what is number seven? I think this is a really difficult one, I think, to put your head around when you're in your 20s or 30s or 40s, because when we sell a home and we're moving to our next home, we're like, woohoo, I get to move into that one now. And I loved this one, but I'm, you know, you're really looking yeah. forward to the next step. And so it makes leaving the old one behind easy. True. But if you've lived in your home for 40 years, 50 years, I've helped clients who've lived in their home 60, 65 years, they've been in the same home. Wow. That is such a different process it of is. saying goodbye. And so the home becomes so familiar, so much a part of who they are, all the memories there, all the comfort, every, all the decades they spent there that selling it and leaving is like losing a family member. Absolutely. It's as grief stricken as a family member being mm -hmm. lost. And so there's a lot of sadness. There might be anger. There's all the stages of grief. And it's really important to give the senior homeowner the space to grieve, to grieve in their way, however that looks, to be sad, to be angry, to be quiet, however that takes shape for them, they feel a tearing away when they leave it behind and there's an emptiness and they think about their home for years to come. And I really believe they deserve the space to do this um, for as long as they need to without people saying to them, okay, now you need to move on or everybody needs to yeah. move on and minimizing the grief or making it seem like they're being overly dramatic or emotional let them be sad. It's really yeah. hard to sell their home. Very true. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very true. I remember sitting with a client, um, once and, um, we had, uh, she had just signed to sell her home and we were meeting in a kitchen for some reason. It was like the kitchen of her senior care community. Cause that's where there was a table available and for the notary who came and notarized the documents, it was just one stop in her day one of eight notaries that she was doing in that, in her day. And she was just all business and getting it done. And off she went. And I sat with the client for a minute afterwards. And I said, you know, I think there might be some ice cream in the freezer. So we raided the freezer and we found some ice cream and we just sat and just allowed her to kind of be in the moment and be sad and have some comfort in people around her as she was, you know, grieving this enormous step that it wasn't just a signature to her. It was the last step of her home ownership. Well, and so many times people have lost spouses and then they yes. sell the house. So not only are you letting go of a house, but it's the memories that you shared with maybe yes. 50 some plus years of a life with someone. Right. Um, so it's a lot more emotionally charged than people realize that it is. 
And so we talked about kindness as the first one. And, and part of kindness mm -hmm. is validating them, validating yeah. them. Good this word. morning with the gentleman that I was sitting in his living room, I, he said, I don't know. I don't know if I can sell. And I said, it is a hard decision, isn't it? And he said, my wife died here. I lived with my wife here and, sh and she died here. And, and so leaving the home feels like leaving her, just like you were saying before. Yeah. And so he needs the space to grieve. This sort of plays right into our number eight, the last one, which is an opportunity to say goodbye. And it's not the same as the space to grieve because you can grieve anywhere in the country mm -hmm. and still not have had a chance to say goodbye to the home that you loved. Sure. And I want to tell a quick story about um, a woman named Dorothy, who I assisted her with her home sale. And we, um, the home was renovated and it was going to go to a new owner. And this was it. We weren't going to have access to the home anymore. And uh, I said, would you like to go back and take one more look at the home? And she said, oh, I would really like that. So we drove, we took selfies by the front door. I took a picture of her by the kitchen sink. And then she said, could I just have a few minutes alone in the house by myself? Aww. And I said, absolutely. I'll run an errand and I'll be back. Take your time. And so there was a chair in the living room. And she just sat in her chair. She had raised three sons there. She had, she had owned the home over 50 years. And she just got to be alone with the home and say goodbye to it in that moment. And that was really important to her. And the home sale should never be so rushed that there is not the chance to do that, mm -hmm. to say goodbye. So for some people, um, it's quiet and reflective. For some, it might be driving by and waving. It might be writing a letter to the new owners about all the quirks of the home and how to turn the sprinkler on and what to do with the hummingbirds when they come out and, and where they like yeah. to hang the hummingbird yeah. feeders and which neighbor has an obnoxious dog, but if you give him these treats, he'll be okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or just sitting I on the I bet you back. have a million stories like that. <laughs> <clears throat> or just sitting on the back deck and taking in the view yeah. for a little bit longer. And so we as professionals and as family members and as advocates and as elder care providers and as friends and family, we want to respect the significance of that place to the homeowner Absolutely. of all that it held all the years that passed there and give them that opportunity to say goodbye. One sure. more story. We, we renovated a home for a client one, uh, just recently down uh, down here. And she wanted to invite all of her neighbors over to see the renovation before it was sold. Aww. And so we got treats from Starbucks, we got coffee and it was like a giant open house and all of her neighbors came and saw the renovation. And she had her realtor give them tours around the home. And she just sat there basking, um, as the hostess, sure, the she beautiful did. home that she was selling. And it meant so much to her that she wrote a thank you letter to us for letting her do that with her neighbors. Yeah. And that was her chance to say goodbye. And it's interesting because I've worked with families. You're, you're saying that um, one of the things that I've encouraged families to do, and that we have talked about this before we started recording is <clears throat> go to like, go to your, it, do you have a bedroom that you spent, yes. you know, 10 years yes. in, right? Or, or, or anything like that, write a letter to the new owner about what, what, what this room meant to you, maybe yeah. how you had it decorated. Um, you know, these are the milestones that you reached, you know, I won track championships and put <laughs> my trophies in here or anything like that, that is pertinent that had this room. And, and what we just did is put an envelope and just stick it right in the middle of the floor. Oh, you know? I love it. So it's like to so-and-so, yeah. whatever that is. So when they, we're, they're moving in, they see these letters in every room. It's like all of a sudden there was a connection and it was really interesting because in one of the cases that we worked with, the new owners actually reached out to them and said, oh, thank you for this. Yes, it, they do. It automatically connects them with the house, but it also made them feel good about 
that this there was love in this house. Yes. There were good things in this house. And that building that emotional attachment to the home makes the seller or feel good that they have the home. And they're passing it on. You know, yeah, absolutely. The oldest client I ever took care of uh, through her home sale was 101. And she was oh, super happened. smart. She finished all of our sentences, signed all her contracts herself. And she wrote the most beautiful letter to the new homeowners when she sold her home that she had owned for 64 years. And I framed it. It was so precious that I framed it and left it on the kitchen counter for the new buyers. And they came in and there was chocolates and maybe some champagne to welcome them to their new home. And a letter from the 101 year old senior homeowner that whose home they bought. Um, and that is amazing whose history they were buying into. So that was her opportunity to say goodbye to, um, yeah. to her home. Yeah. And, uh, and it really, to uh, it is an important process. It mm -hmm. really is. And not to have that time to be able to let go. And, and you're right. There are two separate things when it comes to mementos and, you know, and, and that, and grief, grief, you know, grieving look sometimes can take a year afterwards yes. realizing that just because i let go i'm still in the process i'm not really you know i'm missing my old house yeah. and, you know maybe a part of that i'm sure you know is let's take a drive out to the new neighborhood yeah. you know or old neighborhood to see how things are going to drive by the house just to make you feel like it's still there you know exactly. those are things that are important as well i know i did that with my mom a couple of times let's just drive by the old house and see how it's doing yeah and of course right away she looked from the house and she went well he's not taking care right. of the yard very <laughs> That's probably going to happen if you do a drive-by. <laughs> and I went, okay, mom. Yeah. <laughs> so Rebecca, how do we reach you? Well, thank you so much for this time, Suzanne. We are, um, we're online, of course, all the time at sashservices.com. Lots of information on our website and our phone number 206-501-4375. And just thank you for allowing us to be here. Well, we're very, very glad you are. And we're looking forward to having many more conversations like this in the yes. future. And again, to each and every one of you that have come and listened to us today, Rebecca and I say thank you. And, you know, take care of your loved one, take care of your senior loved one. Yes. And most importantly, be good to each other. Yeah, thanks. Answers for Elders radio show with Suzanne Newman hopes you found this podcast useful in your journey of navigating senior care. Check out more podcasts like this to help you find qualified senior care experts in areas of financial, legal, health and wellness, and living options. Learn about our radio show, receive promotional discounts, and meet our experts by clicking on the banner to join the Senior Advocate Network at AnswersForEldersRadio.com. Now there is one place to find the Answers for Elders. 